Well, good evening. All right. Jamie, we have everybody. We're ready to go or you need some more time? Okay. Hey, we got a full house. I'm scared out here. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> He's not real. Yeah, he is. <laughs> they don't come by my booth. Mm -hmm. You can walk away for a minute. to bring the meeting to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Could you... Uh, Roll call, please. Certainly. Good evening, everyone. All right, Council Member Kelly. On deck. Council Member Turner. Here. Council Member Perkins. Here. Council Member Mendoza. Here. Council Member Best. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. And Mayor Croft. Here. Introduction, presentation, and proclamations. We have none of those. Call to the public. Call to the public is an opportunity for the public to address the council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the council that is not on the agenda. Public comment is encouraged. Individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. The total time for call to the public may be up to 30 minutes per meeting. Council action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date or responding to criticism. Ms. Daniels, would you like to come up and this is Cindy Daniels. She's a vice vice superintendent. Well, that sounds like I'm in charge of vice, but it's really assistant. <laughs> so you're good. Well, he's a, he's a vice mayor, so he. Well, we don't want to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. No, good evening, um, council mayor, vice mayor. Uh, my name is Cindy Daniels. I'm the assistant superintendent for the school district. And I'm not here actually in quite that capacity tonight. I'm here as a member of the board of the Chino Valley Education Foundation. So a little over a year ago, um, the Chino Valley Education Foundation was founded. It's a 501c3. And the purpose of the foundation is to support the students, staff, and families of Chino Valley Unified School District. Because the foundation is a 501c3, um, it allows us to apply for some types of grant funding that the school district is not eligible to apply for. For example, it's not widely understood that schools in Arizona are not nonprofits. And so a lot of granting entities only make grants available to nonprofits, and schools are not nonprofits. Seems counterintuitive because we're not in the money making business but that's how it works in Arizona. So a lot of school districts have foundations that are, exist to be able to support and encourage um, projects or opportunities inside the district. So I wanted to share with you tonight just a couple of the main projects of the foundation so you better understand what we do. We meet every other month, um, the first Thursday of the month, so we'll be meeting next Thursday. 
and I believe Maggie, the new um, development director, will be joining us on the board of the, the on the foundation board, which I think is a terrific opportunity to kind of um, work together from different entities to support uh, lots of opportunities in our community. So some of the things that we support are, um, I know that um, Addie was here talking to you about the Green Bag Project. Green Bag supports the weekend meal bags for students, but so does the foundation. The Hungry Kids Project receives quite a bit of grant funding through the Arizona Community Foundation and other granting entities because, they're f because they fall under our umbrella. That enables them to pursue the grant funding. Um, we also support extracurricular activities for students who are unable to uh, maybe pay for pay to play or for field trips or for things like um, college application fees, um, registering with the NCAA or the NAIA for <coughs> students who want to go on to participate in college athletics but can't afford the fees that go along with becoming part of those associations for recruiting purposes. The foundation supports that supports um, equipment for students who can't afford maybe their equipment for sports trips. We had one gentleman donate um, to the foundation about, he learned that we have students, many students who can't afford to eat when they're on an away game for an athletic trip. And so he went to Subway, figured out that you can get a value meal for $6 and he bought 100 $6 subway cards for us to provide to the coaches. So when they're traveling with students on the team who can't afford a meal out during an away game, they can just slip them a, a subway card so the student has a way to eat. So the foundation exists to support lots of unique projects and needs that we don't always think about that exist in our community. But because um, we serve a student population of over 65% free and reduced lunch eligible. We also are um, tax credit eligible, which is huge. So that's the other thing I wanted to share with you. Most of you are familiar with tax credit donations and how those work in Arizona. Um, an individual can give $200 and a married couple can give $400 per tax year. Um, and that directly reduces their state tax liability, which is a wonderful thing. But there are also charitable organizations for which you can give $400 as an individual or $800 as a married couple in addition to what you do for a school. And there are organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters that are tax credit eligible, but Chino Valley Education Foundation is as well which is fantastic news because I always say this, and I know this is a bad place to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I, when I'm talking to people about tax credit donations, the first thing I say is, so are you happy with how the government spends your money? Cindy, I, Cindy. I, yes. Up here. Yes, I know, we have a minute. No, uh, just oh. please address the council, yes. not the, okay. the, thank you. So I just wanted to let you know that most people don't say they're happy with how the government spends their money. And I know that includes school districts too. So I wanted you to know that um, when I share with people, you can redirect some of your state of Arizona money to a cause that's near and dear to your heart. Then I can share with them about how they um, can give to the foundation to support students. So I just wanted to share with you um, that the foundation exists because we're really trying to get our name out there now that we have I mean, a year under our belts. Um, the foundation um, took in little over $100,000 in donations last year, so that was a pretty good first year and has enabled us to do lots of things like over 93,000 weekend meal bags last year to students who would not have had meals on the weekends. So 93,000 meals is an awful lot of meals when you think about the need in our community. So those are things that I wanted you to know about and just to let you know too that I believe Maggie has some of the tax credit forms available here I also have information about the foundation and then I'm gonna pitch this Friday night is homecoming at the high school. So I didn't know if you knew that or not. I wanted to share that with you. And the foundation will be present at the game selling Cougar Pride stickers. And the stickers are $5. I know it's probably, you know, you're like, it, but it's $5 to support the foundation. They are really good on water bottles and they're really good on the back of your vehicle. 
Tom's print and sign did them for us and they're super duper sticky for those purposes. So I wanted you to know that those are available because I think everybody in town should have a Cougar Pride sticker on their vehicle. So thank you for letting me come and share with you tonight about the Chino Valley Education Foundation. If you need to know more, most of you know where to find me behind the big marquee. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Cindy, very much. You're welcome. Have a fun meeting. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is anyone else would like to speak? Yes, sir. Please come up and tell us your name. Good evening. I'm Larry Holt. I live on Homestead Mesa. You guys have heard from me before. And unfortunately, I'm here to talk about the same thing once again. And that is the upcoming PNZ application Z19008, the Grove Apartments. It's been uh, submitted this year by Chris Fergus. It'll be heard by planning and zoning on October 1st. It's to allow the construction of four two to three story structures to house 152 units. The property is currently zoned to allow a maximum of 100 units. The plan was forwarded to council last year with a higher number of units and did not make it through. This year they've decreased the units, but to add a twist, they've added more three and four bedroom units so the population is going to be a maximum of over 500 residents making it the highest density housing project in Chino Valley. The problem with that is it's surrounded by all R1 or, or zoned R1 one acre minimum lots and commercial properties. And looking into the history, I know a little bit about how that planning got changed, but boy, that should have been never changed to that type of housing. It should have stayed um, commercial agriculture. Complex will result in a traffic increase of approximately 334 motor vehicles. That's based on the national average of 2.2 vehicles per household. Children, adults, in both pedestrians, bicycles, on horseback, ride up and down those streets up here between Road 1, Road 2, Road 1 West. There's no bicycle lanes. There's no sidewalks. This, uh, if allowed to go forward, all this traffic is going to really contribute to the degradation of our roadways. The surrounding neighborhoods I talked about, they're all one acre or larger lots. Residents purchased these homes because they wanted the privacy afforded by a larger piece of property. Allowing these structures will not only violate the personal property of the adjoining residences, but also those in adjoining neighborhoods which is gonna block their views. And I'm, I'm not in that neighborhood. It's gonna block my view, but the way I look at it, the trees are gonna block my view too, but I'd much rather see trees than a three-story apartment complex looking in my backyard. Um, you've read everything I've sent you, I'm sure. There's studies showing that high density like this is going to cause an increase in crime rates. That's definite. There's no way to say it isn't. Fire response is going to see different significant issues on getting in and out with only one entrance going in and out, one roadway. Evacuation will be nearly impossible if you had a major incident in that area. When it comes down to crime rates, I've mapped the city out. I've talked to Chief Wynn, and it's proven. The high density areas of Chino Valley is where our crime occurs. You can drive the, draw that line right down one and two and look at your, your crime mapping and you'll see it going down one side 89 and the other. They say it's going to be, or it's not going to be affordable housing. It will not be section eight. It will be fair market price. If we're looking for affordable housing, this isn't it because they're talking starting 900 to 1200 for a one bedroom, one bath unit. That's not affordable housing here. We don't have the people that need, that can pay that kind of rent working around here. I can get into the fire issue, but I'm sure you guys can talk to the fire department and find out just what that is. But we all know that you can't get to the top of a three-story building with a ladder truck. <laughs> this thing was a bad project last year. You guys all recognized it last year. It's a bad project this year. It's going to be a bad project if it comes back next year. I wish there was some way to take a step back and leave the zoning where it was, because that's where it should have been. And I hope next meeting when I'm back, I'm going to have something really positive and upbeat to tell you about the town on some plans we have. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Thank you. Anyone else that'd like to speak? Elizabeth? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and esteemed council member. My name is Beth Vickery. I am an, an Eagle Level Frontier Girl. 
On September 11, my Nana drove me out to the Memorial off Perkinsville Road. It's a beautiful tr true be trip, trip, tribute, tribute to the first responders that serve our country on that terrible terrible day. However, I was deeply saddened to see there was no plaque with the memorial. There are no signs to leading to it. The important monument is hidden from the community. If it isn't going to be placed in Memory Park, it should be well labeled at least. Other adults feel the same way. They will be coming to talk to you next month about making improvements to the area. I am hoping to work with them in the future, but right now I am announcing publicly my Commitment to getting a plaque for our 9-11 memorial. I will be organizing a fundraiser to raise at least $800 for the 16 by 14 bronze plaque expenses. I look forward to the community support in this project. Thank you very much. Looks like, sounds like a good project. We can't discuss it. This is just input. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, anyone else that would like to speak? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll move on to response to the public as an opportunity for a mayor to inform the public about how town officials address matters raised during call to the public as a previous meeting. We have no response to the public. Let's move on to current events, summaries, and reports. This item is for information only. The mayor, any council member, or town manager may present a brief summary or report of current events. If listed below, there may also be a presentation on information requested by the mayor and council. Questions may be answered, no action will be taken. And item A, a status report by the mayor and council. I do not have anything. Anybody on this one? Yeah. We do not have anything. Then we'll go on to status report by town manager Siri Gritman regarding town accomplishments and current or upcoming projects. Um, first, I just want to say that Lieutenant Sean, or sorry, Lieutenant Chapman told me there is a uh, town council vehicle that has a light on, a Toyota. Anybody? It off. Oh, it's turned off. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, didn't want you to go out to a dead battery. I just wanted to mention to the council and the public that uh, the mayor has asked that we expedite the temporary sign language discussion, so we will have that in a study session on October 15th. We will be inviting the chamber who will be inviting uh, local businesses to participate in the discussion. Yep. 6 p.m. That it? Okay, let's go on the consent agenda. All those items listed below are considered to be routine and may be enacted by one motion. Any council member may request to remove an item from the consent agenda to be considered and discussed separately. We have anyone want to move anything? Remove 6B. 6B. We'll remove 6B. Any other items? Then we have a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve consent agenda items A, C, D, and E as written. I have a motion is a set. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, let's go to item 6B, consideration of possible action to approve expender of GOHS grant funds in the amount of $24,300 for STEP or step enforcement overtime related materials and supplies. Just in reading over this, I noticed that uh, uh, Vincent Sean, Lieutenant Vincent Sean was still 
on here as the project administrator and just wondered what kind of change we needed to make before we could deal with this. So somehow the grant that you guys have in your packet is actually the grant cycle that we're in right now, which ends September 30th. The uh, new grant is actually uh, 2020 PTS 011, and it's the, the same agreement in the grant, but the total amount of funds is 15,900, not the 24,300, I believe, that we got this year. One so more time on the amount, right? Uh, the, a grant for this year will be 15,900. Thank you. And it's gonna be for the same type of materials to uh, fund over time for traffic details, and then the uh, materials and supplies will be to purchase additional uh, speed signs for different, for other school zones. Does that answer your question? Well, my, my only question is, uh, I mean, that's satisfactory to me that this is just a, a misprint or the wrong paperwork. My question is, with what's in front of us, can we, can we approve this tonight with this written this way? I'll refer this to our legal department. And the legal department had to take his phone off mute for, before he could answer. <laughs> um, the grant is properly listed in the, uh, is not properly listed in the amount in the agenda. So uh, if we're going to have the, the grant approved in its current amount, you're going to need to amend the motion to include the current amount of 15 uh, and change just to, it was just provided to you. And, uh, authorize the police chief and facility to sign the necessary current grant documents and that should be fine okay is it okay is yeah it's okay. good you okay. just we just need to change it we in our motion. In our yep. motion okay thank you okay i'll make a motion that we approve uh consideration possible action of expenditure of the GOHS grant fund in the amount of 15900 for step enforcement overtime related materials and supplies. Second. And that Chief Wynn and the town manager will, can approve it. Yes. Okay. And we, we change the amount? Yes, I changed the amount. Yeah. All right. We changed the amount. Quick. We have a second? <coughs> she did. Yeah. She did. And he did. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Let's go on to action on it. The <coughs> council may vote to recess the public meeting and hold an executive session on any item <coughs> on this agenda pursuant to ARS 38-431-0303 for the purpose of discussion or consultation for legal advice with the town attorney. Executive sessions are not open to the public and no action may be taken in executive session. Let's go on to item A, consideration of possible action to adopt ordinance 2019-872 rezoning approximately 2.05 acres of real property from AR5 Agricultural Residential 5-Acre Minimum Zoning District to SR1 Single Family Residential 1-Acre Minimum Zoning District. The property is located 460 feet east of the northeast corner of West Central Street and Sycamore Vista Drive at 1370 West Center Street, Assessor Partial 0621011. Zero, zero one zero T, Mr. Lerma. All right, good evening, Mayor, as Mayor and Council. We have an item by the Lasser family. They're requesting to rezone their property. Stated before, the property is located 490 feet east of Center Street Road and Sycamore Vista Drive. As you can see here, the area is pre predominant by medium and low density residential. We have Mesa View South to the north of the subject property and Chino Valley Estate subdivision to the south and Molly Ray to the southwest of the property. So basically this area is, like I stated before, is dominated by residential, medium and low density residential. Property is right now, staff is considering the property illegal non-conforming uh, property based on the zoning classification. The property is currently zoned agriculture residential five acre minimum. Lot size of the property is about 2.2 acres. 
they're requesting to rezone their property to uh, the closest zoning that's being supported by the surrounding properties, which is single family residential one acre minimum. The property is access to Center Street Road and there is a 12 inch uh, sewer line along Center Street Road, so it is abutting the property. Applicant submitted uh, notices to surrounding properties within a 300 foot radius resulting in 14 letters. Uh, we conducted a neighborhood meeting here at Town Hall on August 7, 2018. There were no attendees at said meeting. The item went before Planning and Zoning Commission on September 3rd, 2019. During said meeting, uh, commissioners had questions about condition number two and three that uh, staff was recommending. Specifically for condition number two, the commissioners wanted clarification on the verbiage of modification and expansion. Uh, <coughs> uh, the condition that staff recommended was any modification or expansion of existing building that would require the replacement of a septic tank must hook up to town sewer. Uh, Public Works Director uh, Frank Mulberry stated that uh, County are, are the ones that review the septic systems for the state. So in other words, if the property or the building within the property were to expand or locate where uh, Yellow Pike County were having them modify or expand their, their septic tank, then at that point, the property owner, property owner would need to extend the sewer line to the property. Um, stipulation number three, Reads as follows, property owners shall provide an additional 25 foot right of way along Center Street. One of the commissioners stated that uh, there is a fence uh, abutting the, the property or in front of the property, the front yard, as seen here in the first uh, slide. He wanted to know if that additional 25 foot would be abutting that, that fence line. Um, Public Works Director Frank Mulberry stated that he believes so. Uh, commission asked if once that 25 feet of um, property would be dedicated for additional right of way, if uh, council, if uh, staff would be asking them to remove the fence line. Um, Public Works Director stated that that could be an option. Another option would be that for them to. Uh, uh, sign a revocable permit, meaning that the fence could stay there until the expansion of the street. And then at that point, the property owner would need to remove the fence line. So, Staff and Planning and Zoning Commission are recommending that this item, uh, that Council uh, adopt Ordinance 2019-872 to rezone approximately two 0.05 acres of real property from the current zoning of agricultural residential five acre minimum to the proposed zoning of single family residential one acre minimum with the following stipulation. Uh, stipulation or condition number one, any new construction shall be required to hook up to town sewer. Condition number two, any modification or expansion of the existing building that will require the replacement of a septic tank must be hooked up to town sewer. And number three, property owners shall provide an additional 25 foot of right of way along Center Street. So this is the recommendation that both staff and planning and zoning um, forwarded to council. Uh, I know that uh, there was some discussions uh, last week during study session regarding uh, properties extending to uh, sewer or utility utilities. So I will leave it to council if they wanna remove condition number one and two or leave it as is as a uh, staff and planning and zoning recommended for the recommendation. Yes, sir. Questions? Comments? Comments? Um, do we have the property owners here as far as the property owner here? Yeah, he brought Please come up. Uh, 
All right, th thank you for coming up. No problem. Um, on these recommendations, are these something that, are these recommendations all right with you, or do you have objection to them? Well, the only question we have is we have an existing mobile on the back of the property, which is going to be pulled off, and it is on a septic system by itself right now. Right. And they plan, my, it's my kids, they plan on building a house there. Now, are they still going to have to uh, hook up to the sewer, or can they use the existing septic tank? I, I'm getting a, a nod, yes. It sounds like that oh, they would be. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. It's um, okay. It sounds like that would then include them hooking to a to the, the sewer at that point. Okay, yeah, okay. because there is a That's sewer the only question we have. <coughs> okay. Mr. Marbury is a town engineer. He's going to come up and. And that, and is, is that, that sounds like that's not a big deal okay. though to you, correct? Okay. No problem at all. I okay. have okay. I have one question. What initiated this zoning change request? What initiated the zoning change request? Uh, my my kids lost their house in two thousand eight. Mm. A lot of them did. Yeah. And it's really been hard for them to get refinanced and everything. And so I I'm getting older. My wife's getting older. We're both kind of uh -uh. crippled. <laughs> not at all. Okay. I'm twenty five. <laughs> and every year the, the two acres is too much for us to keep up okay. and they said well if we take half of it we can build a ho our house back there and take care of mom and dad yeah and i said sounds good to me if we can get it through the city and everything else around us we're all one acres anyway and okay why we're on five i don't know that part is wrong okay thank but you my question's our answered our development okay. services director what do you What's the question? Oh no, he, he I didn't answered have any what questions. I had. Oh, the mayor was. Yeah, I wanted you to. Oh, is there I, I do have with what they want to do. If if they move the if they move the trailer, can they hook right back up to the septic? No, no. no. the the conditions and stipulations would require them to connect up to the sewer, but the sewer is right in front of their property, yeah, already. One in the back. In the back, they'll be in the, back. In the back. Well, back. Well, that would be extensions through private property, but the sewer is available. Uh, Frank can. Uh, one, uh, <laughs> Josh, one other on, on your end. Uh, that fence up front, uh, I haven't heard of that. There's an agreement so that they can leave their fence up front what until the road gets, yeah, until we're the road gets, gets built. Yeah, we're looking at a revocable permit um, so that that fence can stay up until such time that the town improves that, that road, which I can't see that in the near future. <laughs> so. I, I have a piece of property that applies that same way, yeah. and uh, and it's nice that you can then keep it maintained out there right. yourself right. and keep it looking nice. So that's so great. So I, I don't want to overspeak uh, the whole sewer question, so I'll turn it over to Frank. Okay. We're confused on whose sewer and who's now. Right. You're confused. We're not. Sure, and not uh, confused. mayor and council, uh, just to muddy the waters <laughs> even more, the answer is it depends. <laughs> because it the, the lot is not split so you don't know I don't know exactly where the lot lines are but generally if it's new construction on a lot that has frontage next to a sewer line we're taken as from staff's point of view that they need to connect to sewer for any new construction um, if this lot is split in such a way that it doesn't have road frontage and there's just an easement going back there my understanding from the study session last uh, meeting was not to restrict that and to, if the county allows a septic there, to let them put in a septic or if they wish to extend the town sewer at their expense, they would have that option, but it'd be up to the property owner. And the reason this these stipulations are different is these stipulations came in before the study session, so we didn't had that discussion after these stipulations went through planning and zoning so that's where Alex said <coughs> talking about um, and of course you always have this discretion to to do as council directs since you're the the elected leaders of this town so um, but we just wanted to point that out that these stipulations were made prior to the discussion from the study session okay. if they seem a little confusing or different than what was discussed at that time my understanding is um, as the property is now 
as it is not split into two different parcels that um, you would need to um, run sewer to a new structure in the back of the replacement the home instead of the mobile home and then after if you did proceed to do a lot split then at that point the terms would change am I correct in that the terms could change depending on where the lot lines lay um, we don't usually allow or require the sewer lines you don't want them going across other people's property so if they sold that property you wouldn't want the one property encumbered by another with sewer lines if that makes sense absolutely uh, and it says here that would require the replacement of a septic tank yes so you may just want to rem my advice may be just remove stipulations one and two and let the code take care of itself when that time comes if council wishes this side lawn's thinking hard over there see the slide of the of the property again please can can i ask the attorney a question is that okay that um, Andrew, um, when you go through a rezone, is really about the only time that you can ask for these types of stipulations, which is something that we didn't ask for on the previous rezone that happened that they're referring to. Is that correct? Well, it certainly is the, the best time to ask for the kinds of things that you're going to need to, to have as improvements to the future of the property. That's why the, the 25 foot dedication is really important at this point. Uh, Frank is correct that the code will require certain things uh, regardless of what you have in the ordinance and, okay. and the connection in accordance with the, uh, the current code requirements would likely require uh, that the septic to be uh, replaced with the sewer line. And, and so I, I think there's uh, these provisions were intended, as Frank said, you know, prior to the, the last work session, to make it clear that the town's intent was that if you were nearby a sewer line, you were going to connect up. And that's why it is if existing buildings required replacement of a septic tank. So if you built something that was bigger or had more capacity than the, the trailer is currently on site, this stipulation would require it by itself. But that doesn't mean that the code provisions that back this stipulation up are going to be any different if you delete one and two. So, you know, to Frank's point, this is the only time that you are able to ask for these kinds of conditions, but it may not matter because these conditions are consistent with your town code. I think what we've got right here is the intent of the zoning and when there's a change to hook into the sewer, unlike what we were talking about before where we've got a roadway and several different homes and so on. There's going to need to be an easement that goes across this property to the back piece of property and that would be the area where you could run the sewer, I would think. So I'm in favor of just leaving it the way it is, the way it's written. I'm with Lon. And how would the proposed access for just off the r record, your your son or your family that's in the back, how are they going to get in and out? What kind of easement will they have on that? I can maybe, that's on the same theory. I can maybe answer that for the family. Uh, when we do lot splits, if there's an easement required, it's a 50-foot ingress and egress and utility easement called a public way as defined in the code. So is this lot going like to have that? Just like the ones that? for the other lots. Hmm? Is this lot going to have that? If they split an east-west line, it will. That's what they're doing. So you can have a north half and a south half. Right, if they do it that way. So I never, we'll, I never we'll say what happens until it's recorded. This is just zoning. They're not splitting yet. But they, I'm sorry, that's what they just said is, is what I was going by. He's just saying right, but right people tell me a lot of things and then don't do them, so <laughs> <laughs> just play it safe. 
I, I, I go for leaving it as written. Yep. Yeah, and they, they seem to not have any objection to it, so let's leave it is the way it is. Is there a motion? Yeah, where's it at? Right there. Um, Seven A. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion we adopt ordinance two <coughs> 2019 eight seventy two to rezone approximately two point zero five acres of real property from AR five zoning district to SR one zoning district with the conditions recommended by staff. I have Seconded. a motion. Do I have a second? Second it. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Let's move on to B. Consider Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and speaking to us. Consideration possible action to approve the Town of Chino Valley Personnel Policy and Administrative Guidelines Manual, Town Vehicle Use Policy Number 465, revision dated September 24, 2019. And Good that's evening, our Mayor Council. Manage. All right. Okay, so uh, town use um, uh, vehicle use policy. It's been about 17 years since we've looked at this policy, so it's time <laughs> to look at it. We didn't actually make a lot of changes um, to the policy, um, so I have a list for you. Um, the first thing that we did in the HR department was we sent out a request to the Arizona HR Network Group requesting what other entities have in their vehicle use policy to make sure that we're in line with other entities and we're, we're not asking for things that are inappropriate. This feels so weird when this is like right there. Um, so that was the first thing that we did. Um, so the provisions of this uh, policy apply to all town employees and elected officials. The assignment of all department vehicles is, used, uh, is um, based upon job description and department need. Um, department heads who have vehicles available for work purposes in their departments um, may assign those vehicles um, in a manner that's consistent with workload and employee function. And uh, this is just a reiteration, town vehicles and equipment shall only be used for official town business and personal use is prohibited. And it does currently say that in the, the handbook as well. Um, so the primary changes that took place are listed here. Um, it clarifies that driver's license, uh, the driver's license requirements and experience. Um, it notifies staff that the town reserves the right to utilize a GPS tracking system on all town vehicles. We currently do not have one, but if we have one in the future, um, the objective is to ensure that the vehicles are used um, as efficiently as possible. It reiterates the responsibility of the employees driving town vehicles to mm -hmm. obey all traffic laws, uh, parking regulations, ordinances, and laws. Um, it clarifies the requirements for take-home vehicles. Um, it also outlines the internal revenue, revenue code for the use of business, business vehicles as a taxable fringe benefit. Um, and it also includes that new state and local law pertaining to the use of um, hands, uh, cell phones basically, portable mm -hmm. communication devices. So those are the primary changes that took place in that policy. Questions? No, I don't have any. This is, I'm sorry, I do have one quick question. This is done by a committee or a, a group or is this done by you and your assistant? This is done in the HR department. Um, we don't have a committee that does it, and that's why the HR department sent out a survey to the um, HR network in mm -hmm. Arizona of all other munis municipalities asking them, what do you do to make sure that we're in line with like entities and we're not asking for something that's inappropriate, inappropriate so or out of line? You try to line up with the, the, the majority flow there? Sure. Yes. Okay. I have a request for a quick recess. Take a break. Let's go.